I've been running a series recently on my channel where I take each of the heavy assault cruisers out with one single fit and try to run all four of the different C3 combat sites. Now I've had a lot of success with this, several of the heavy assault cruisers so far are really actually quite good at this, one size fits all seems to work, but it was only ever going to be a matter of time before one of them started proving a little bit more problematic. Lo and behold, of course it would be one of the Amar cruisers. It was either going to be Amar or Galente, let's be completely frank. And the Zealot has certainly been a challenging ship for me to try in this challenge. It's a laser ship, it traditionally has the golden bone colour scheme, it's not the kind of vessel I would normally fly, and certainly trying to run all four of the combat sites proved problematic. But how did I get on? Well, watch on and find out. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Amar Empire's heavy assault cruiser, the Zealot. This is the Amar Empire heavy assault cruiser that is based around energy turrets and as long term viewers of this channel will know, I'm not a big fan of lasers. I think the god bothering laser monkeys light shows are okay, I guess, they're just a little bit boring and don't feel that much fun for me to use personally. I prefer to launch hot lead into the side of my opponent's ships or thermonuclear warheads. I just think that's much more interesting, but hey, that's just me and I know a lot of you do enjoy the Amar cruisers. Now the Zealot is therefore a ship that I was not really intending to fly ever in EVE Online, but part of this challenge is to bring that up and give it a go. So I've tried numerous different fits, I've settled on one that I think sort of works, and I've got a bit of an interesting story to tell on this one. So we're going to try and look at the Zealot with a one size fits all fit, one fit, one ship running all four of the C3 combat sites. If you do enjoy this video, let me know, hit like on it, drop a comment down below, both of those really help the channel out and are completely free for you to do. But if you do want to go the extra mile to help supporting me make content like this, head across to my Patreon page, my Redbubble merchandise store, or my PayPal tip jar. Huge thanks to everyone who is able to support, it really does mean the world to me. Finally, if you're new to EVE Online, come join the Catskull Community Discord in the description down below. Great way to meet some like-minded pilots, maybe even consider joining the Catskull Wormhole Corporation and join us out in space and see how you get on there. And certainly you can also get yourself 1 million skill points completely free by clicking my referral link and logging in. As long as you haven't used a referral, doesn't matter how old your account is, that link will work for you. I do get a minor kickback, but a million free skill points is a great way to get a good head start in EVE Online. All of that said and done then, let's jump right into talking about the Amar Empire's heavy assault cruiser, the Zealot. The Zealot Heavy Assault Cruiser is the second of the Amar Empire Heavy Assault Cruisers that I've showcased on this channel. We've already had a look at the Sacrilege, and who boy, what a ship. I love the Sacrilege to pieces, it is such a powerful vessel, and it ticks a lot of the boxes for me personally. Visuals, weaponry, that kind of thing. The Zealot, on the other hand, it's a bit of a weird one for me. I'm not going to say it's a bad ship, it's just not my personal taste in ship. I don't particularly like the colour scheme of this, that sort of bone and gold. I'm not a huge fan of energy turrets at all. I may use them more than hybrids, but I just don't find them as fun. Yeah, the instant swapping is nice, and the fact that you don't have reloading and things like that. Yeah, there's a lot to say about lasers that are good, and the usual disadvantage of lasers, the fact that you are hard-coded into electromagnetic and thermal damage, doesn't matter with sleepers because they are omni resists and if I'm being completely honest some of the focusing crystals that you can use for energy turrets are just outright insanely good scorch specifically and yes that is a little bit of a spoiler for getting to the fitting section but talking about the Zealot Heavy Assault Cruiser itself, let's have a look at its traits, its ship characteristics. Now, being a Heavy Assault Cruiser, we have the ability to fit Assault Damage Controls. If you've watched a few of these videos, you'll know what all of this is ahead of time, but if this is the first video of these that you're watching, let's talk about what an Assault Damage Control is. So first of all, I'm going to assume that by the time you're flying heavy assault cruisers, you're at least somewhat familiar with the standard damage control unit. A damage control unit is a low slot module that gives a passive bonus to your hull, armor, and shield resistances across the board. You just fit it, you get bonus resists. It's a really cool piece of gear. Now an assault damage control can only be fitted to assault frigates or heavy assault cruisers, and we can mouse over and see the list there of which ships can use these. Just so you have an idea, you can't fit these onto just any 
anything, only these particular vessels. It, like this damage control unit, gives bonuses to hull, armor, and shield resistances, but not quite as high as you would get off the standard damage control units. The reason for this is that the assault damage control unit has an activatable aspect to it. If you activate the assault damage control, it gives you massive bonuses to your resistances for just under 9 seconds before going on a 150 second cooldown. Think of it kind of like a panic button. Oh no, I'm taking a lot of damage, slap the ADC and boom, your resists go through the roof and you just stop taking damage or barely take any damage for the next 9 seconds. It does have a 150 second cooldown, so you do need to be careful about when you use this, but it can often be enough to help you get away from a sticky situation or if you're trying to get up a good traversal, for example, and you're taking a lot of incoming damage, it can just reduce the damage you're taking whilst you get into a better position. Anyway, that's Assault damage controls, so let's talk about the rest of the ship. We then have a Mar Cruiser as one of our bonus skills, and in order to fly the Zealot, you'll actually need a Mar Cruiser 5, so we're going to talk about this as if it's maxed out, because it will be maxed out when you're flying it. It's going to give you a 50% reduction in medium energy turret activation cost, very nice, helps your capacitor, medium energy turrets use a lot of capacitor to fire, and obviously in C3 ratting spaces, we do have a lot of neutralization going on. We are cap sensitive, and thus a weapon system that uses a lot of capacitor is a concern. Concern. Fortunately, the Zealot having that reduction does help us out big time. It also gives us a 25% bonus to medium energy turret rate of fire. This is kind of a double-edged sword. With most weapon systems, increased rate of fire is just a flat-out good thing. If you're using autocannons or rockets or whatever, any of the missile or the projectile systems that don't use capacitor, that's a flat-up bonus. It is just an increase to your damage per second. On the other hand, if you're using either hybrids or more effectively, more importantly, energy turrets, yes, it's an increase to your damage, but it's also an increase to your capacitor usage, because if you're cycling faster, you are paying the activation cost more frequently, so you do have to bear that in mind. Fortunately, the Zealot has an okay capacitor, it's a pretty good capacitor, and we can handle that later on, and again, that reduction to the medium energy turret activation cost does help mitigate that somewhat. Finally, then, we have the Heavy Assault Cruiser skill. Now, this is one that you can train up optionally. This is going to give us a 10% bonus per level to optimal range of medium energy turrets and a 5% bonus to medium energy turret damage. So at full Heavy Assault Cruiser 5, that's 50% additional optimal range and 25% additional damage. Both really, really nice things to have. It should be noted that the Zealot used to be primarily used as a sniping vessel. Unfortunately, its lock range, like the Cerberus, was heavily nerfed, which means it's not quite as good at that as it used to be. And I certainly did toy with using a beam fit on this particular vessel to see if that would work, and unfortunately I just really struggled with the frigates. I don't have the speed to maintain a proper range against them, nor did I have quite enough damage to be able to take out all of the frigates before they got too close for those beams to properly track and handle. It just didn't really work. So instead, I've ended up going for a pulse fit. And, well, I guess we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but yeah, we'll get onto the fit in just a second. Now, the Heavy Assault Cruiser skill, as I said, is technically the optional skill. You can undock this once you have Heavy Assault Cruiser 1. I wouldn't, but you can. With a lot of the Heavy Assault Cruisers, they are a little bit skill sensitive, especially with the Heavy Assault Cruiser skill, um, especially those that use tank. If the Heavy Assault Cruiser skill is what contains the Shield Booster or Armor Repairer bonus, for example, that can make things very sensitive. Now, I'm personally running Heavy Assault Cruiser 5. In this instance with the Zealot, you could probably get, a, out, uh, get along with undocking it at Heavy Assault Cruiser 3. I would, I would suggest the minimum is Heavy Assault Cruiser 3. No, don't even bother undocking it before that point in time. I would strongly recommend getting to Heavy Assault Cruiser 4, and then if you can, I'd recommend getting to Heavy Assault Cruiser 5. 5 is like your pinnacle. 4 is really damn good. 5 is nice, but it's not as important as 4. 3 is the bare minimum that I would have. Anyway, let's have a look then at the fit. So, because, as I already said, I tried using beam lasers and they just didn't track properly against the incoming frigates, in this instance we are going to be using in our high slots here, Heavy Pulse Laser 2s. And I do strongly recommend the 2s. The reason we go for 2s is because we get the absolutely bonkers Scorch ammunition. Scorch, as far as I'm concerned, is probably the best ammunition in the game for what it does. It gives you extraordinary range and maintains really 
high damage, which is just astonishing. And I kind of wish Hail was that good. Like, Hail's good. It's not Scorch. I wish Barrage were that good. It's good. It's just not Scorch. Scorch and Conflagration both are excellent crystals, and they're the only two that we're going to need for this particular fit. Now, I've gone for Heavy Pulse Lasers because we want the optimal range and fall-off range that those particular turrets can give us. In fact, if I were to fit Scorch in here right now, we'd get some really strong range. I think it's optimal to 28, which is just so good. Remember, we're going to have Awakened Up Holders. These are kind of my benchmarking ship. You need to make sure that whatever ship you're flying in a C3 combat site can handle the Awakened Up Holders. They like to web you, they neutralize you, they can be a real thorn in your side, and they orbit at 30 kilometers, and they can be really hard to approach closer than that. So you're going to want some kind of weapon that can hit that 30 kilometer range, and Heavy Pulse Laser 2s with Scorch do that really, really well. And if you can get sort of to the 12 to 15, uh, 12 to 13 kilometers, 12 to 15 kilometers, then the conflagration again becomes absolutely bonkers good. I may not like lasers as a concept or as a weapon system, but I cannot deny they are really, really good. Instant reload, damage rather than having to worry about running out of ammunition, and just such good range and damage output. Seriously, really cool weapon system, very powerful for this kind of content. Now, because we are going to be using energy turrets, capacitor stability, naturally a problem for us. This means I've gone for two Thucker medium cap batteries. You can go Republic Fleet. I personally prefer Thucker. Republic Fleet gives you a bigger capacitor um, and likely better gigajoules per second on your delta, but that comes at reduced resistances to uh, newting. And I honestly find that the slightly weaker medium cap batteries, the Thucker ones, do actually do better and on this particular vessel at least. Most of the time it's so close as to be negligible, but I think the Thucker really does just pull out ahead here. If you've only got Republic Fleet though, don't stress it, they will get the job done. Uh, we then have a 10 mega newton afterburner 2 for propulsion here in the middle. This just helps us navigate the site. Very slow ship normally. It's one of the slower heavy assault cruisers. 625.34, not fantastic, but still an okay speed once we're AB and moving. For our low slots then, we need some tank. I'm going to start off with a, re a reactive armor hardener here. This is a beautiful piece of equipment. I'm not going to go into the details here. I have got a reactor armor hardener video either released or releasing soon, depending on what order I do things. So keep an eye on the channel and it'll explain exactly how this works. But essentially it starts at 15% resistances across the board and it rejigs itself to plug whatever holes you happen to have. So in this case, looking at our resistances, that is going to massively generate electricity electromagnetic resistance as we take damage and it will increase that way. We then also have a thermal energized membrane too, just to plug that a little bit. Without it, we have very low thermal resistances. You could kind of go an EM energized membrane too here and then just let the reactive plug the thermal. It's kind of up to you and whatever's cheaper on the market. That is going to do the job quite nicely. Now we have two medium armor repairer twos filling out the rest of the tank here. This is where I need to pause and talk a little bit. Now there is one particular site that I'm going to be showcasing in a moment. This fit is going to struggle to run on its own and there are two ways that you can handle that. You can either use hard shells, hard shell boosters, and those will help you survive the final wave of the outpost frontier stronghold, or you can bling the medium armor repairer twos. I've personally done this with Dark Blood. Dark Blood did need a bit of overheating just to maintain, so you could bling it up to Dark Blood and carry some nanite repair paste. You could also swap these to Corpum C types, B types, or even A types. And I would go Corpum. Corpum seemed to work best on this particular vessel. I did try Corpum C type, Corellum C type, and Centum C type. And the Corpum, well, Corpum and Centum, they're basically the same thing. The Corpum and Centum did work, but the Corpum were cheaper on the market at the time. Do be aware that those are kind of your two options. You've got your own different ways of doing it. You can either just go hard shell and have to rely on consumables um, that you are going to have to use each time you do an outpost frontier, specifically that final wave. You can bling the medium armor repairers a little bit up to something like dark blood, but then have to carry nanite repair paste because you are going to be overheating. Or you can bling it up to corpum C-type
types, B types, or even A types, depending on what your budget is. And those will tank it on their own just fine. So you've kind of got three different options here. I'm showing you the cheap one to start with, the medium armor repair twos with some hard shell boosters, but it is kind of up to you which way you want to go about it. If you don't want the faff of having to remember boosters or nanite repair paste, go for the Corpum dead space armor repairers. Finally then for tank, we have our Assault Damage Control 2. Again, some people do swap an ADC out just for a standard DCU. It is going to give you better passive resists on your armor, but that comes at the downside of it only being passive um, and you not having that whopping great big boost that you can just activate. I've had situations where actually activating the Assault Damage Control has saved my life and standard resistances would not have done. So I mean, if we simulate this, for example, you can see that with all of that on, with the ADC active, our lowest resistance is 90%. And that's 90% before the reactive armor hardener has started to attune itself to whatever incoming damage we are taking. That is probably going to be a lot higher, 96% explosive. Really, really nice. Now we do have two remaining low slots, which I've plugged with heat sink twos just to get our DPS up a little bit higher. You can see 679.2 DPS coming out of just those turrets with conflagration. That does drop a little bit to around about five, 500 um, if we are using conflagration, uh, sorry, scorch instead. Drones, not much in the way of DPS coming out of these. You can see I've actually only got four out of the five fit at the moment. I lost one in the last combat site I was doing. I'm just running Infiltrator 2s because they're thematic, but you can use Hammerhead 2s, whatever you fancy. You're going to be using, uh, no, not uh, Hammerhead 2s, sorry. You're going to be using Acolytes or uh, whatever, because we've got 25 megabits per second, which means we can use a full flight of light drones, which are going to be Acolyte 2s or Hobgoblin 2s. We will get there in a moment. Benzie's brain is melting. Finally then, the rig slots I've gone for here are medium capacitor control circuit twos. This is just to push that capacitor stability right up. These are actually probably one of the more expensive parts of the fit, but they are very necessary. You need those twos or you will not be cap stable enough to survive neutralizing. The, the Aru's will absolutely wreck you. You'll even struggle on a fortification frontier stronghold with wave two going into wave three with two awakened up holders going into the awakened up holder and sleeper sub holder. It will just cap you out very, very quickly. You need good capacitor stability for this one. Anyway, for blinging, if you do want to bling this one up, um, I would bling out the armor repairers first and foremost. Those are going to be your predominant bling. You might then bling the booster, the afterburner up a bit if you want. There's not really much you need to bling. I'd actually keep this one fairly cheap and it does remarkably well. Anyway, that's that said and done. Let's jump into showcasing this in action and talk about how this varies between the different sites. Now, before we jump into the actual combat section, I just want to showcase a couple of PvP kills that I managed to get with this. Unfortunately, I didn't quite catch the retribution there on the footage, but long story short, I was out ratting in the C3... Oh, God's sake. Come on. Now, before we jump into the actual combat demonstration here, I just wanted to showcase some PvP footage I managed to record with this one. The little explosion you saw in the distance there was a retribution that I killed, unfortunately, just before I started recording. Didn't catch that one on screen. We had a fleet of very small ships come at us, a load of frigates and destroyers, whilst I was ratting the C3, and a couple of my corp mates did lose ships. This turned out to be EVE University, and what a great fight they put up for us. We managed to muster a response fleet and out I went with the zealot. Still just the same PvE zealot that I had been using. Um, ultimately, I had friends doing things like tackle and in slightly more PvE oriented ships and I managed to get I think four different kill mails here. This was an excellent fight, a lot of fun. So that execra there, the execra navy issue, I couldn't quite get onto that. Then the caracal warped in close here. Jangu Danis, I am very sorry here, Jangu. You know you did message me about this afterwards. It was a great fight, but the second he arrived on grid, we managed to get him scrammed down, held in position, and just the lasers from this just ripped him apart. That zealot absolutely cut into pieces. Now I was hoping here I would then get the second of the caracals. Just unfortunately, I think it does warp away before I get range as does the Execra Navy issue. These guys, we just couldn't seem to range them. They were really good pilots, these guys. Came in, we had a fantastic fight. 
A few seconds later though, that Execra Navy issue did warp back in and we did manage to pin it down with some long range point. So Bazinga Mogus, I think I'm pronouncing that right, is here in an Execra Navy issue. Um, and I just sat there with my lasers and again, tore a new one into this. Really powerful ship, the Zealot here for PVP. If you've got people who can tackle, obviously you've only got a couple of mid slots to work with here. So I wouldn't recommend trying to use this fit directly for PVP, but having friends that can hold the enemy in position is a really good op option there and certainly this really held its own in the fight i took a decent amount of damage you can see i got all the way down to hull but the ship held and that assault damage control so useful i think we took out two caracals an uh, execra navy issue and the retribution is what i got the kill mails for on this particular one so that's four new kill marks there on the zealot couldn't get that Enyo, that guy kept his range. The other Caracal, again, couldn't manage to pin him down. Really great fight from the EVE University guys. Those folks are absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed my time flying with EVE University when I first started back again with EVE Online. Great bunch of guys. If you are looking for a corporation that is going to help you figure out how this game works, they are one of the best to join. And certainly folks, if you are watching this from the EVE University team, yeah, Really great to see you out here in J Space. We in Catskull will quite gladly engage you anytime you see us. So good luck, happy hunting, and hopefully we'll see you again for a new fight soon. As for the actual PvE that you've signed up to this video to see, well, it's not quite the same as the other C3. As for the actual PvE content that you folks signed up to this video to see, unfortunately the Zealot isn't quite the same as the other heavy assault cruisers that I've managed to showcase. Now for the Fortification Frontier Stronghold, the Zealot is a fantastic option. It runs the sites really quickly, really easily. Just do the usual thing of making sure you kill one of the upholders early on in Wave 2 and keep your transversal velocity up against the battleship in Wave 3 and you'll do just fine. Really quick clear times work works really, really well for that. The Solar Cell, not a problem with that at all either. Very easy to take out even if you get the additional battleship spawn in Wave 1. Just follow your kill priority and you'll do fine. The Aruz Construct, I was surprised, actually wasn't as difficult as I thought. By the time you've taken out the first few upholders, you are just about cap stable enough to hold onto your position and you can keep up your transversal against the turrets nice and easily. The Ultimately, the Aruz surprised me. I thought that was going to be the one that would be the problem for the Zealot. The one that is the problem for the Zealot, unfortunately, is the Outpost Frontier Stronghold. You can see here by the fact that I've warped in on Wave 3 and it's got two battleships and only two frigates left, I've had to warp out of this one already. I've actually tried several different fits in this site and just could not get it to work. I lost two Zealots running this thing. It just doesn't work. The first two waves, not a problem. This third wave, those two battleships and the amount of webbing on you is just dangerous. You can see here how low I get in the health here. This is not going to be the third zealot that I lose. Fortunately, we do just manage to squeak out of this one with a little bit of hull left, although I have to abandon my two drones on the way out. I could not find a fit for the Zealot that would run Outpost Frontier Stronghold. So unfortunately, there is no one size fits all fit for the Zealot running C3 combat anomalies. The Outpost Frontier Stronghold is forever going to be a thorn in your side. Now, if any of you do happen to have a fit you think will really work for that, I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's basically it here. The Zealot, unfortunately, cannot run all four sites. You can run the Solar Cell, the Aruz, and the Fortification Frontier Stronghold. And three out of four, I don't think it's all that bad with one fit. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Good luck if you're enjoying flying the Zealot. Seriously, again, if you do have a fit that runs the outposts, let me know. Maybe there's something I didn't consider, and I will update and add another video to this later on if there is a fit that works for that. Otherwise, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.